Hey guys, so the next book I'm going to read y'all, or next story I should say, because this book is loaded with stories. It is comes from Beatrix Potter's The Complete Tales. Do y'all know who Beatrix Potter is? She's one of the most famous children's authors in existence, and she wrote a very famous children's story, which most of y'all should know, um, called uh, The Tale of Peter Rabbit. So let's go ahead and read The Tale of Peter Rabbit from, and look here, here's a picture of Peter Rabbit there. Beatrix Potter, The Complete Tales. Tale of Peter Rabbit, 1902. That was the year that she wrote it, I believe. Once upon a time, there were four little rabbits, and their names were Flopsy, Mopsy, Cottontail, and Peter. They lived with their mother, and they sat in a sandy bank underneath the root of a very big fir tree. Now, my dears, said old Mrs. Rabbit one morning, you may go into the field or down the lane, but don't go into Mr. McGregor's garden. Your father had an accident there, and he was put in a pie by Mrs. McGregor. Hmm, do you think they're going to listen? Now run along and don't get into mischief. I am going out. Then old Mrs. Rabbit took a basket and her umbrella and went through the wood to the baker's. She, brought, she bought a loaf of brown bread and five cur currant buns. Flopsy, Mopsy, and Cottontail, who were good little bunnies, went down the lane to gather blackberries. But Peter, who was very naughty, ran straight away to Mr. McGregor's garden. Uh-oh. And squeezed under the gate. First he ate some lettuces and some French beans. And then there the, and then he ate some radishes. Ooh. He certainly isn't doing as he's told, is he? And then, feeling rather sick, he went to look for some parsley. But around, but round the end of the cucumber frame, whom should he meet but Mr. McGregor? Mr. McGregor was on his hands and knees planting out young cabbages, but he jumped up and ran after Peter, waving a rake, calling out, Stop, thief! Peter was most dreadfully frightened. He rushed all over the garden, for he had forgotten the way back to the gate. Way back to the gate, he lost one of his shoes among the cabbages, and the other shoe amongst the potatoes. After losing them, he ran on four legs and went faster. So I, so that I think he might have gotten away altogether if he had not, unfortunately, run into a gooseberry net, and he and got caught by the large buttons of his jack of his on his jacket it was a blue jack it was a blue jacket with brass buttons quite new uh oh what do you think peter rabbit's going to do now huh peter gave himself gave himself up for lost and shed big tears, but his sobs were overheard by some friendly sparrows, who flew to him in great excitement and implored him to exert himself. Mr. McGregor came up with a scythe, and which he had intended to pop on top of Peter, but Peter wiggled, wriggled out, wriggled out just in time, leaving his jacket behind him, and rushed into the tool shed and jumped into a can. It should have. 
It should have been a beautiful thing to hide in if it had not been so if it had not been so much water in it. Mr. McGregor was quite sure that Peter was somewhere in the tool shed, perhaps hidden underneath a flower pot. He began to turn them over carefully, looking under each. Presently, Peter sneezed. Kerchoo! Mr. McGregor was, was after him in no time, and tried to put his foot upon Peter, who jumped out the window, upsetting three plants. The window was too small for Mr. McGregor, and he, and he was tired of running after Peter. He went back to his work. Hmm. Do you think Peter Rabbit's out in the clear, though? Let's see. Peter Rabbit sat down to rest. He was out of breath and trembling with fright. He had got, he had not the least idea which way to go. Also, he was very damp from, with sitting in that can. After the first, after a time, he began to wander about going lippity-lippity, not very fast, and looking all around. He found a door in the wall, but it was locked, and there was no room for a little fat rat, for a fat little rabbit to squeeze underneath. An old mouse was running in and out underneath, under the sto over the, in and out over the stones, over the stone door steps, carrying peas and bees to her family in the wood. Peter asked her if the way to the gate, but she has so much large pea, so much, but she has such a large pea in her mouth that she could not answer. She only shook her head at him. Peter began to cry. Oh, poor Peter. Then he, he tried to find his way straight across the garden, but he became more and more puzzled. Presently, he came to a pond where Mr. McGregor had filled the water can, his water cans. A white cat was staring at some goldfish. She sat very, very still, but but now and then the tip of her tail would twitch as if it were alive. Peter thought it would be best to go to go away without speaking to her. He had heard about cats from his cousin, Little Benjamin Bunny. He went back towards the tool shed, but suddenly, quite close to him, he heard the noise of a hoe. Scritch, scratch, scratch, scritch. Peter scuttered underneath the bushes, and presently, as nothing had happened, he came out and climbed upon the wheelbarrow and peeped over. The first thing he saw was Mr. McGregor hoeing onions. His back was turned toward Peter, and beyond him was the gate. Peter got down very quietly off the wheelbarrow and started running as fast as he could go along a straight walk behind some black currant bushes. Mr. Gregor caught sight of him at the corner, and Pe but Peter did not care. He slipped underneath the gate and was safe, was safe at last in the wood outside the garden. Whew, that was close. Mr. McGregor hung up the little jacket and the shoes for the scarecrow to, for a scarecrow to frighten the blackbirds, Peter never stopped running or looked behind him until. Laura looked behind him till he got home to the big fir tree. He was so tired that he flopped up, that he flopped down upon the nice soft sand, on the floor of the of the rabbit hole and shut his eyes. His mother was busy cooking. She wondered what he had done to his with his clothes, and. It was, it was the second little jacket and pair of shoes that Peter had lost in a fortnight. I'm very sorry to say that Peter was not very well during this evening. During the evening. His mother put him to bed and made him some chamomile tea, and she gave him a dose of it, and she gave a dose of it to Peter. 
one tablespoonful to be taken at bedtime. But, fl mop, but Flopsy, Mopsy, and Cottontail had bread and milk and blackberries for supper. The end. Well, that was a cute little tale, huh? And it's a little story that tells you how you should always follow directions from your from your family, huh? From your uh, from your from your parents or the adults in your family, right? Anyways, I hope that y'all enjoyed that story. I send all my love to y'all. Remember the class rules. Love yourself. Love others. Bye-bye.